Hello, welcome to have a go. Today I don't really feel like doing anything on the lathe. I'm a bit lathed out. So make a start on the, the metal shaper. Or at least start making some of the patterns for it. What this is is basically a single point cutting tool where the cutter goes back and forth across the work. You're cutting a channel basically. The trick being, it'll cut the channel, then as it comes back, the table will automatically move. So the next channel it'll cut will be right next to the first one. Table will move, and so it'll plane a surface without me having to do anything once it's going. Still have to order the cold roll steel for this, but right on to clean pages. It says to use half inch wood for the broad part. I'm going to use some 12mm MDF that I've got. Once I put the lacquer on it should be the right thickness. And I will make the trim for this first I think. This needs to be 12mm. It's about 9, 18 or so I think. This trim has to be seven and three eighths inferiors long. Probably a couple millimeters longer than it should be, but I'd, for the trim, I'd rather have too much than too little. Now I need some rounded over stuff, and they didn't really have what I needed at the hardware store. And it just so happens I've got some router bits I picked up ages ago. One of which is a rounding bit, which is exactly what I need. Uh, see if I can clamp this down before I go any further. How do you lock the spindle on this thing? It says you use the two provided spanners to adjust it. Both of which disappeared a long time ago, I suspect. Alright, hopefully that's got it. Alright, safety PPE. Because this thing scares the crap out of me. Just take this out. This needs to be 6.35 mil in. That kind of screwed up. It's meant to be half an inch or quarter inch. The other piece I need is 25.7, sorry, 12.7 mil by 25.4. Let's move the fence again to 25.4. Well, that's a stroke of luck. This is pretty much the trim I need to go on the opposite side of this. Didn't plan that, but sometimes you get lucky. This is the rough stock that I'll be using. One side is 11 and a quarter. The other side is 7 and 3 eighths. The obvious answer for how to cut this is going to be the skill saw. Uh, seven. Uh, 
Oh, for crying out loud. That was the good saw that I don't use to strike off my sand moulds. That goes there and that goes there, but I think I had better mark out that hole and cut it first. 3 and 11 sixteenths. 11 divided by 16 is 93.66. 5 and 1 quarter in. One by eight equals yeah the compass and right, I'm gonna rest the board between these two so I've got some room to work. If I was chirpy I'd pull out some magic your know, hole making plane. Yeah, playing just for making holes to just the right size. I'm not chirpy, so I'm going to drill a pilot hole and then use the jigsaw. Why am I using this bit? Because I bought it and I want to get some use out of it beyond just the core box. Oop, too far. Alright, change out the metal one for a woodworking one. I think I'd better wear my earmuffs for this one. And I'll close the shed door just so I'm not annoying all the neighbours. Okay, the blocks aren't high enough. If this isn't tall enough, then shoot me. I think EMFs were the right call. It's only vaguely circle-like, but it should do. I think I'll use the router to round this edge over nicely. Got the tools, may as well use them. Alright, that's what we've got. There's a horrible circle, but it should mould up nicely. I'm not going to be rounding over this surface because this will be on the parting plane and it will lift up this way so if I put a rounding over the sand will lift when I pull the pattern out. You may recall I deliberately cut these too long so now I need to cut them to the right length. I'm sure all the woodworkers in the audience are screaming at me, that's not how you do it. I'm going to be sneezing sawdust for the next 10 years at this rate. I'm not convinced that this is thick enough. These are some strong clamps on this thing. Leave that to dry. And I'm glad I'm wearing gloves. Next order of business 
put this on this side with a little added wrinkle that I need to drill some holes through here and install some pins so it's removable but will go to the same place each time. So this needs to be one quarter inferials from the top of this. I needed to get this parallel with the bottom to, so that I'd have less work to do when it comes time to sort out the ram slideways. How am I going to get the heads off those nails? With the Dremel. Okay, be glad we don't have smell of vision because burning Dremel, oh sorry, burning super glue smells really, really bad. If you do this yourself at home, use a respirator for that part. Did a lovely job, mind you. Dead quick. Yeah, there's no way that's lifting out easily like it says in the book, but hopefully I'll make it work. Right, smooth it out a bit. Lord knows it needs it. Going to be sanding this back, so I'm not too worried about making them perfectly smooth. Right, put a fillet on the inside corners. Once that's dried, I'll sand it back smooth, hit it with the shellac a few times, then it's on to making the flasks for these. I need to make flasks because, as you can see, this isn't really going to fit my existing flasks. Annoyingly, I forgot to put filler in there. I'm going to have to make up some more shellac soon. This first coat of shellac the wood will probably drink a lot of it in. It'll be the second and third coats that really get things going. Not even be able to do another coat already. This stuff dries fast. It's a little bit more work than the spray can clear coat, but it's also a lot, a lot cheaper and you don't have to throw away a spray can when you're finished. So if uh, everyone else playing along at home, I highly recommend looking into using shellac for clear coat. Well, not really clear, but finishing coat as well as these little 3D printed paint pyramids which are the mutts nuts just need to get some more methylated spirits and mix up more shellac I'll, mix up, I'll make up the flask for casting these later today and it would be cool if I was able to ram up and mould one of the sides tomorrow but we'll have to see